taking it with Timmy V. Let's go. This morning, the Pentagon says the U.S. is sending a small number of troops to the Middle East as tensions rise there. A Pentagon official would not elaborate on the size nor nature of the additional troops. Meantime, 270 people have been killed in Israeli airstrikes on Hezbollah targets in Lebanon, the deadliest attack since the 2006 Israel-Hezbollah war. More than 1,000 others have been injured. This all comes after Hezbollah launched more than 100 rocket attacks into Israel yesterday. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7. That wasn't that great, but that's something from a reputable news source. That's one of the things, too, I try to do. Even though ABC is ABC, and if you watch the, the debate, you would have your own uh, perspective on on ABC. But the thing is, I don't want nobody coming at me where you're getting it from a, from one of those people that aren't credible. Yeah, well, there you go. Now I'm about to bring it here with some more stuff here. Oh, I got the news article here for you, folks. Check this out. We got ABC News. This was as like 8, 9 a.m. today on the 23rd, September 2000, or September 23rd, 2024. U.S. sends more troops to Middle East as violence rises between Israel and Hezbollah. <clears throat> ba -da -da -da. Da -da. Ah, interesting. President Joe Biden's going to meet with world leaders in the UN this week because World War III is over here starting. <clears throat> That's what's going on. So let's get into this. The U.S. is sending a small number of additional troops to the Middle East in response to a sharp spike in violence between Israel and Hezbollah forces in, uh, or forces, or Hezbollah forces in Lebanon that has raised the risk of a greater regional war. Raise the risk, dude. It's already going on, man. These, these folks with their with their descriptive wordplay, man. <clears throat> it bugs me. The Pentagon said Monday, <clears throat> Major General Pat Ryder at, at the Pentagon press secretary would not say how many forces will be deployed or what or what they would be tasked to do. The U.S. now has about forty thousand troops in the region. It's wild. That's very interesting. On Monday, the aircraft carrier carrier USS Harry S. Truman. Shout out to those brave men and women on that beautiful aircraft carrier. <clears throat> putting their lives on the line. I digress. Two Navy destroyers and a cruiser set sail from Norfolk, Virginia, headed to the Sixth Fleet area in Europe on a regularly scheduled deployment. The ship's departure opens up the possibility that the U.S. could keep up. Oh, that's interesting how it just does that. Uh, the U.S. could keep up both the Truman and the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln, which is in the Arabian Gulf in the region in case more violence breaks out, which I, I'm pretty sure you have to fact check me on this. This was like the first one that went out there. I thought there was already two out there. Uh, so crazy stuff going on in the red sea and there's there's shipping lanes or ships going through the shipping lanes out there or being attacked there's so much stuff going on um anyway in the middle east you're like going out where uh, quote in the light of increased tension in the middle east and out of in abundance of caution, we are sending a small number of additional U.S. military personnel forward to augment our forces that are already in the region, Ryder said. Quote, but the operational security reasons I am not going to comment on or provide specifics. End quote. The new 
uh, excuse me, the new deployments come after significant strikes by Israeli forces against targets against Lebanon that have killed hundreds. And as Israel is preparing to conduct further operations. If you're watching this, go to my YouTube channel at Kicking It With Timmy B. I have a video talking about literally the first day of October 7th of, of that whole event. And then I have a recent video of uh, talking about the recent escalations between Israel and Lebanon with the whole <clears throat> uh, walkie talkies um, and pagers exploding and harming, maiming and killing uh, folks that are allegedly, quote unquote, um, Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah supporters um our soldiers so anyway i'll leave that link in the description below make sure you go check that out and i'll try to have it at the end of this video it should be popping up at one of these parts here anyway so uh New deployments come out to strikes against targets inside that kill oh yeah 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 uh, Israeli Prime Minister, this guy, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Netanyahu on Monday warned Lebanese civilians in a videotaped message to evacuate their homes. Which, pause, we're going to pause this for, for a second. I'm being told that President Xi Jinping is ordering folks that are in Israel that are from his country to evacuate. So, I'm going to say this. If you know anyone that's in Israel, you should probably tell them to get out of there. This is uh, it's getting pretty serious. Getting pretty serious because who knows what's about to happen here, right? Um, and you can also fact check all that as well. Please do. And get back to me. I'd love to, love to know. Uh, yes, videotape message to evacuate their home. So Benjamin Netanyahu is telling the people, the Lebanese civilians, to evacuate Lebanon. Not only are, is it, so he's telling them, the people of Lebanon, to evacuate. President Xi Jinping and all of these other world leaders are telling folks that are living in Israel, if you're, if you're living in Israel, you need to get out of there. They're not saying that in this article, but I'm adding that part. They're definitely saying this, though, about Benjamin Netanyahu telling these folks to get out of Lebanon. That's very scary. He spoke as Israeli warplanes struck alleged Hezbollah targets in southern and eastern Lebanon. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been hearing they've been doing like carpet bombing and all this other stuff. It's it's very sad, man. It's very, very sad. So now this war front is going from the Gaza Strip in the West Bank or whatever uh, to the northern border of Israel to the southern border of Lebanon all the way. Did he say like the northern in, in the eastern border of Lebanon? That's crazy, man. That's crazy. If 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 you folks don't know where any of these places are at, you need to get a map. For sure. You need to get a map because they're real close. There's Israel, there's Lebanon right here. <laughs> uh it's right there. It's a bit bit scary. These folks are surrounded on all sides. So anyway, let's get back to the to the article. The US has created uh enough geography. Geography lessons here. The U.S. has concrete ideas for restoring calm along the Israel-Lebanon border that it will present to allies and partners this week on the sidelines of the annual U.N. General Assembly gathering of world leaders. A senior State Department official said, so hold up, the U.S. has concrete ideas for restoring. Where are these ideas at, Joe Biden? Kamala Harris, you numbskulls at the freaking State Department, all you guys at the Pentagon, where is the concrete ideas? Why are they not being implemented? You know what I mean? I, I, I would love to know. 
I think uh, I think the American people would love to know as well. Not just me. But anyway, the official who spoke to reporters on condition of anonymity to discuss the private diplomatic efforts said the U.S. and numerous other countries were eager to present an off-ramp for both Israel and Hezbollah to reduce tensions and prevent an all-out war. The official not would not detail the concrete ideas are because he said... He said they had yet to be presented to allies and partners for what he termed a stress test for their likelihood of success. The The State Department is warning Americans to leave Lebanon as the risk of regional war... <laughs> uh, this is crazy. They continue. Quote, due to the unpredictable. I mean, it just keeps going. <laughs> it just keeps going. Due to the un- unpredictable nature of ongoing conflict between Hezbollah and Israel and recent explosions throughout Lebanon, including Beirut. Uh, the U.S. Embassy urges U.S. citizens to depart Lebanon while commercial options will still remain available. The State Department cautioned Saturday. Let me just bring up something here. If these folks are here, man, if there's some U.S. citizens in Lebanon, dude, you got to get out of there. I mean... Does anybody remember that terrible Afghan push or pullout, evacuation, whatever you want to call it? Those people, there's like no commercial airlines going out or going to Iraq right now or or, or Afghanistan. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting all this stuff mixed up. If you look up the Afghanistan pullout that Joe Biden and his administration, if you want to call it that, did. Those people had limited time to get to, I think it's Bagram Air Force Base and the Abbey Gate. Please look all of this stuff up. This isn't fictitious right-wing rhetoric. Please look this up. These are all real events in real places. <laughs> oh, my God. Long story short, these people were left there. These people are left there. What do you mean, you? these people, Timmy B? Please give me some context. Please elaborate on this event that I probably don't know about. <laughs> because it probably wasn't put out there enough or probably uh, uh, buried un- under the other failed, <laughs> failed policy. In lo- oh, my God. Dude. A couple years ago, the United States pulled out the Afghanistan war. Um, there was a lot of American citizens that are probably still trapped there today. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Go look up Tim, Tim Kennedy. Go look up Tim Kennedy and Afghan or Abbey Gate, and he'll have all the information for you. I didn't go to Afghanistan. I didn't go to Abbey Gate. Um, and I'm not Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy actually went out there to go save people's lives and go bring them back. Uh, allegedly, because some people are like denying that he did it or whatever. Like, whatever, dude. Go look up Tim Kennedy. He went out there to go help people. I'm going to stand on that. Uh, please fact check and come back. Long story short, he had to go out there to go get people. And then he also got a lot of the the Afghani translators and people that helped out the American. Uh, like, dude, there's like nobody talk about this. Like, I feel like I'm just, just, oh man, it's so sad. Long story short, just, just go look all that up. I, I don't even want to even go because I'm not doing it justice. Cause this is, this is real stuff that you folks, <laughs> people were left behind. That's all I'm trying to say. People were left behind. If you ain't catching a flight, homie. You ain't making it out alive. And guess what? The Taliban and all those terrible people hemmed up all those folks. When I mean hemmed up, 
It's like a, it's like a military term, like a Marine Corps term. When somebody hems you up, they grab you by the. <laughs> I want to curse. They grab you by the collar. <laughs> they grab you by the collar. And guess what? You're gone. <laughs> you're, no one's never going to see you ever again. So the whole point of this is that those folks in Afghanistan couldn't catch that flight. And they're stuck there. If you are in Lebanon, you got to get out of there. Or it's about to turn into an Afghanistan. And we don't even have American troops there, to my understanding. Um, I don't know the whole intel of what the... Uh, Op, the operational security of what those folks are doing, of what American troops are being out there, what we're doing. But, I mean, who's going to get you? Who? The whole point of this is who's going to get you? <laughs> you need to get out of there. This is real life, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about it. There's a lot of enthusiasm behind this because, I mean, this is – happening right now <laughs> this is happening right now and there's not much i could do about it besides read this article express to you some of the information that or life experience or whatever experience that i have and intel that i have and you know just put it out there and let you folks let you great folks um let me know what you think about that so anyway you get off my soapbox so yeah they're urging people I'm just going to highlight this again. And by the way, I heard that they got the guy that caused the Beirut bombing. Killed like 240 Marines. Go look that up. <laughs> I bet that's not being talked about right now. Go look that up. Apparently, Israel did a, a, a run in Lebanon. And they they said that they said, quote unquote, this is Israel. I'm not no Zionist, uh, whatever, whatever these kids are saying now. You're a Zionist. You know, I, 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 I want to say in between. That's what those folks are saying. Israel is saying the, the Israeli Defense Force or whatever, the spokesman of Israel stating that they confirmed that they got that guy, which is crazy because he lived this guy did that. The whole point of this is, is that guy did that and got away and, and thought he got away with it until 2024. Like late, earlier this week, allegedly they they done dropped the dropped the thing on this dude and now he's done. So go look up the Beirut bombing. Go look up all this stuff. I know folks ain't. The kids ain't being taught that. The kids are like, the, ba the Beirut bombing, where they do that at? Where's Lebanon? <laughs> Beirut? Where's this Beirut? You boomers are talking about. <laughs> oh, man. I, off the soapbox again. Ryder would not say if the additional forces might support the evacuation of American citizens. See, like, this is what I'm saying, bro. Y'all folks need to get out of there, man. I don't even... I mean, I don't know why you would even want to be out there unless you're doing humanitarian work, which, like, man, I don't know. Those folks... You can't help folks that don't want to be helped. Obviously. And and I hear a lot of, a lot of the folks over there, they don't even like America. So it's like, if you're going over there to go help them, I mean, I don't know, but I can't discount the actual Lebanese people that are all for America. And, and, you know, they got family over here and so on and so forth. Like, and in just Lebanese civilians that just want to mind their own business. They don't want, they don't want no smoke. They don't want to be getting all this stuff dropped on them. You know what I mean? These people are in the markets or they got kids to raise and stuff like that. They have freaking, you know, their religion and stuff that they like to practice. And, you know, they don't want, you know, some of these people don't want all this smoke. They don't want all this, but these Hezbollah forces over here are trying to bring the smoke. Anyway, it's like, how does this guy, Timmy, who is this guy? <laughs> who is this guy? Why is he saying all this stuff? Where is he getting this information? <laughs> U.S. officials said a decision is expected soon, possibly this week, on whether the USS Abraham Lincoln. Oh, no. Uh, I thought they were about to say something else. Uh, 
You don't want to know. It's not like that. I was thinking something else that they're going to like start trying to bring people over. Uh, U.S. officials said a decision is expected soon, possibly this week, on whether the USS Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier will stay in the Middle East or continue the, to the East or to the Asia Pacific. Having two two carrier strike groups in the Middle East at the same time has been relatively rare in recent years. But as violence has spiked between Israel, dude, this article keeps going. I mean, obviously, we have to keep going, folks. This is like there, there's there's people having an active war going on there right now. I I I, ha, I cannot overstate that enough. Uh, but as a violent spike between Israel and Hamas and Hezbollah. Man, it's crazy, dude. Both Iranian ba and both Iranian backed militia groups. This is insane. The Biden administration has ordered the Navy to have the carriers and their warships overlap for several weeks, several weeks on on a couple occasions. I'll take the Truman aircraft carrier. Or it will take the Truman aircraft carrier about two weeks to cross the Atlantic Ocean and get to, Medi to the, into the Mediterranean Sea. The official spoke on condition of, of anonymity to discuss troop movement. Here's where it's going to get. Here's where we come in. Not me specifically, because I'm not. I'm not doing anything, right? Remember, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm just breaking this news out to you. I'm not. I'm not the great I'm not the great men and women that are actually on these things doing these great things going out and crazy there is already a marine amphibious ready group in the eastern mediterranean sea with the 26 mu marine expeditionary unit which is called a mu aboard which is excuse me, which is expected to be able to assist in the evacuation if needed. Defense, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, this joker, uh, man, straight up clown, held back, held back to back calls with Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. Very interesting fella. Uh, definitely go check out some of the videos that he's done. Uh, <laughs> explaining some of the stuff that they've been doing to the to the people of Gaza and all that other stuff. I'm I'm not like pro Palestine. I'm not all, but man, it's it's just very sad to see um, those those poor children being affected in this whole thing, man. On 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 both sides, but especially them folks out there in Gaza, man. It, it's it's very unfortunate. I continue, you know, I digress. I digress. Because I'm not on one side. We're we're right in the middle. Because I'm not a Palestinian and I'm not an Israeli, you know. Uh, but I have respect for both, you know, both sides. Both sides. Uh, da, 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 da. Yoav Gallant over the weekend as he pressed for a ceasefire and a reduction of tensions in the region. Ryder said, given the tensions... Given the escalation, as excuse me, as I highlighted, there is a potential for a wider regional conflict. I don't think we're there yet, but it's dangerous. But it's a dangerous situation. Ryder said, "The American presence in the Middle East is designed both to help defend Israel and protect U.S." and allied personnel and assets. Navy warships are scattered across the region <sighs> from the eastern Mediterranean Sea to the Gulf of Oman, and both Air Force and Navy fighter jets are strategically based at several locations to be prepared to respond to any attacks. <clears throat> That's ABC News, folks. It's your boy kicking it with Timmy B. That's my thoughts on it. I tried to give you a very professional. I tried to. I tried to be as professional as I could. <laughs> uh, but obviously, you got some biases when it comes to, you know, who's running this country and, and their foreign policy. But, folks, I tried to be very descriptive. 
uh, and informative uh, and my best to my best. We got some very troubling times right now, folks. Make sure you're staying informed about what's going on in the Middle East. Just because you live in your comfy little blah, blah, blah doesn't mean that this war right now that's an, that's now is now in effect <laughs> just because it's all the way over there doesn't mean that you will not be affected somehow some way whether it be economically financially your security <laughs> it's like you know what i mean like uh, you let me know in the folks you let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like, share, and the, and the subscribe button. We got some crazy stuff going on. All right, so I had to do that. What is what is the next part? So the next part is me giving you the visual of what... I mean, we probably could do this. Let's try this out. Oh. Uh, gotta go check that out. Um, let's see what Probably show you some videos here. I don't know. I have to watch though, because some of these videos. Might be too graphic or something like that. I don't. Like, yo, this stuff's crazy over there. This is, uh. Let's see. Vice grad. Massive Israeli airstrike hits a Hezbollah target in Lebanon. An aerial bombardment of Hezbollah has entered a new stage in this war. Let's go check this out. Crazy, homie. You know I mean? This dude's sitting on the rooftop. You about to catch that, catch that shrapnel. Whoa. That's gnarly, bro. Bro, there's people living here. Like, kids, wives, husbands, mothers, daughters, sons, uncles, aunts, grandmas, grandfather, like... There's people, I, I I don't, this looks like a suburb out there. That looks like a, that looks like a, a heavy one, homie. Homie, that looks like a heavy one. Ooh. Ooh. You could see the flame before it. It's like literally just a small little fire. It goes bump, and you see the small fire, and it just turns into this crazy thing. That's insane, bro. Whoa. Whoa. And this dude, that had to like the shockwave had to had just like he's holding the he's hold, he's holding the camera. It's like whoa, <laughs> he and then he's on this little like um uh, these roofs like uh he is on a roof. I've been on a couple roofs. These little roofs, man, they're not even like that well supported, bro. You're sitting on that thing and that goes uh, like you're sitting on a roof like that and it's not that well supported. You can almost fall through it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what kind of, you know, infrastructure that they got over there. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying these people are like cavemen and they don't have like good stuff. But the whole point of this is this dude's on that roof, bro. This loud, this bomb, go, or this, this, yeah, goes off. Man, you're going to fall right through that. <laughs> you gonna, or you're going to fall right off of it. That's like right there. Just imagine it. If it was like right here or something, dude, you're done. Bro, you're done. I just want to see this in slow mo. Oh. 
Oh, well, that roof. I guess it kind of looks solid. I, I don't know. That looks like it's actually like cement. Cement, cement. They on a whole different... I don't even... Whatever, man. Whatever, dude. Whatever, man. People are living... I don't know what kind of... Uh, I don't know if Lebanon's third world country. I don't know what what vibes that they're on, but anyway, that's crazy. Second world, third world, dude. Look at that, like smoke. That's crazy. Now, to my understanding, they're the the intel that uh, the IDF is giving out is that a lot of these folks. They're or, or they're dropping these because there's actual caches like weapon caches that are stored in these places, and they're just dropping these to get rid of them. They don't even care. I don't want to say that they don't even care who who's there. I'm sure people will will say, well, they didn't let anybody know. They didn't drop pamphlets, whatever, man. All I have to say is, like, I feel like legally or whatever, like. In good conscience, they have to be like, bro, if you're there, get out. Get out. <laughs> We're dropping these. You better not be staying here. Ah, oh, those. I don't even want to get into it because some of these folks, man, they don't even take the IDF serious. They're not going to go drop that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a Zionist, but like if those folks say that they're going to drop something on you, man, you better you better take it serious. Uh, they're not going to drop nothing on you. And then you see this. Ha! See ya. <laughs> see ya. I don't even. Uh, first of all, I'm, I wouldn't even be living anywhere where they'd be doing this. This is just madness. This is madness. Obviously, these people have no other means. So they have no choice. But. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Bruh. What was the other one that we seen? Uh, <laughs> These folks is crazy. Jackson Hinkle breaking Israel is now dropping massive on civilians in Lebanon. I seen this earlier this morning. بعد بعد عم تضرب That sounds pretty real. I've never been to Lebanon, so I don't know exactly what Lebanon looks like exactly. But I mean, that seems pretty real. Those folks over there like denying, like I don't even want to get into all that. That's just that is just way beyond what we're doing here. I don't even want to even entertain any of that. But I mean, if you can't say that that's not real, man. Like this is real. Really out here doing this stuff. It's so 